All right, everyone. So now we're going to be looking at some harder problems when it comes to superposition and um, how to do those kind of problems. So let's look at this conceptual question first. A charge negative Q is to be placed at either point A or point B in the figure below. Assume points A and B line on the same on a line that is midway between the two positive charges. So there's two positive charges here, one charge here, and one charge here. Is the magnitude of the net force experienced at point A greater than, equal to, or less than the net force experienced at point B? So let's just look at this. Let's say we have a charge here, a negative charge here, negative Q. And then we have another charge over here at point B. We're gonna call that negative Q as well. And we wanna know, is the net force more with this red one? Or is the net force more with this green one over here? So it takes a little bit of time to think about that. Uh, if you wanna pause it, you can. One thing that I just wanna say is this negative one over here, you might think, oh, it's closer. So it must experience more of a net force since it's closer. However, that wouldn't be correct because what's happening is what, this one over here would get pulled to the left and pulled to the right equally. So that means the net force of the red one would equal zero. While for the green one, even though it's further away, it's gonna get pulled downward this like this from this one and it's gonna get pulled this way. And the net force, what it's gonna look like is it's gonna be like this downward arrow over here. So in the x direction, it'll cancel out, but in the y direction, there'll still be a net force going down. So there's gonna be more net force going down. So it's gonna be, uh, is the magnitude of net force experienced at A greater than, equal to, or less than uh, at point B? It is greater at point B. So it's gonna be greater at point B since the net force would be zero over here, okay? At point B, less than. Yes. All right, let's look at the next problem. So, uh, this one is pretty difficult. It's like a triangle kind of version, so it might be a little bit more difficult. So, the point charges in the figure have the following values Q1 is equal to 2.1 microcoulombs. Okay, so 2.1 microcoulombs. Uh, point 2 is equal to 6.3 microcoulombs. So let's do this one in red. 6.3. 6.3 microcoulombs and then charge 3 is equal to negative uh, 0.89 microcoulombs so this is going to be negative 0.89 microcoulombs okay find the direction and magnitude of the net electric static force exerted on charge 1 if d equals 5 centimeters so i'm just going to say this is going to be equal to 0 0.05 meters 0 0.05 meters and this is going to be 0 0.05 meters okay so that's what I'm gonna do there. Uh, so it says find the direction and magnitude of the net electric force exerted onto Q1. Okay, so what you kinda wanna do is you kinda wanna draw out the forces first. So let's start out with drawing Q1 and Q3. Since this is negative and this is positive, this one is gonna be pulling this one in. They're gonna be attracted to each other. So I'm gonna call this over here. I'm just gonna call that the force of electricity one. For the red one over here, since these are both positive, this one's gonna be pushing it away. So it's gonna be pushing it away this way. And this is, I'm gonna call this the force of electricity two. So now we wanna find the electric force uh, and we have to figure out what these two values are, what force of electricity two is and what the force of electricity one is. Let's start with force of electricity one. So we know this is gonna be K, Q1, Q2, R squared. It's gonna be nine times 10 to the ninth, Q1, is going to be, I'll just say this one, so 2.1 times 10 to the negative six, and this one's gonna be 0.89 times 10 to the negative six. R squared, they're a distance of 0 0.05 meters away, so 0 0.05 squared. And let's put that into our calculator. Nine times 10 to the power of nine, times 2.1 times 10 to the power of negative six, times 0.89 times 10 to the power of negative six, divided by 0.05 squared, and we get 6.73. So 
this is going to be 6.73 newtons. So this one is pulling it in with 6.73 newtons. Okay. Um, and now let's look at the red one over here. This one should be a lot more because it's uh, a lot more of a charge here. So K, Q1, Q2, R squared. So what we have is this is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. The charge of this one is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 6. Charge of this one is going to be 6.3 times 10 to the negative 6. And then they are a distance of 0 0.05 squared away. So let's see what this force is going to be. 6 or uh, 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times 2.1 times 10 to the power of negative 6 times 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 6 divided by 0 0.05 squared. And you should get 47.63. So a lot bigger. 40. 7.63 newtons. Okay, so since this is so much more, I'm just gonna kind of make this a bit bigger over here. I'm just gonna go like this and say this one is equal to 47.63 newtons. Okay. Uh, one of the tricky things now is though, what angle is this moving at? So we can see that this is an equilateral triangle. So that's one thing to take note of. And something you should know about an equilateral triangle, the angle between all of these are 60 degrees. All right, so this is all 60 degrees, 60 degrees, so it all equals 180. But now we wanna figure out, okay, so what angle is this going at? There's a few ways to look at it. I guess uh, one way that I'm gonna be looking at this is, I know that this angle here is gonna be 30 and 30. So that's gonna be the same here. I'm gonna make this angle right here 30 degrees okay so I'm gonna make that 30 degrees right there because that angle right there is the same as that angle right there and then I know that's 30 so this is also gonna be 30 degrees now I'm gonna try to find out what the force of electricity is in the in the y direction and what the force of electricity is in the x direction so 47.63 times cosine of 30 it's going to be 41.25 and for the y direction it's going to be 47.63 times sine of 30 which is just half so 23.82 newtons now that i have that uh let's go get to work with this what we see is we have sum of all forces in the x and sum of all forces in the y and this is going to be equal to f1x plus f2x and it's going to be F1Y plus F2Y. So F1 in the X direction, since it's going to the right, is going to be equal to 6.73. But F2 in the X direction is going to go to the left, which is going to be equal to negative 23.82. Okay. Oops. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry, I put that in the wrong spot right here. So F2 in the X direction is going over here, which is going to be negative 23.82. Now let's look for the Y direction. We see that this one isn't in the Y direction at all, so this is just a zero. But for this one, this uh, F2 in the Y direction is going down, so this is also going to be negative 41.25 in the Y direction. So now let's add everything up. 6.73 minus 23.82 and this gives us negative 17 let me do this black negative 17.09 newtons that's the total in the x direction and the total in the y direction is going to be negative 41.25 in the y direction so now let's combine this all together what we have is we have 17.09 going down and then 41.25 uh, going down. So 17.9 going to the left and 41.25 going down. Now let's find, find the direction of magnitude. So the magnitude is gonna just be the Pythagorean theorem of that, which is 41.25 squared, which we get as 44.65 newtons. And then now we have to find this angle. K 
hand inverse of 41.25 divided by 17.09 will give us that theta. So we could call this tan inverse 41.25 divided by 17.09 and we get 67.49. So I'm going to say theta is equal to 67.49 degrees, um, which is fine. But also if you want to be more specific, specific you can say south of west. Okay. All right. And that's uh, it for the hard problems with superposition and Coulomb's law. Bum, bum, bum.